In today's episode, we will have reselling news, a weekly business recap, and we'll talk about whether it's always all about the money as a full-time reseller on eBay, as we talk about what I sold on eBay, because sometimes it is about the money. What is up, Galaxians? Welcome to another episode of Galaxy CDs, Rocks and Flips. If this is your first time here, my name is Ryan and I am a full-time reseller working out of my home here in the Bat Cave in the greater Cincinnati area. And this channel is all about the flip life. We'll talk about reselling, reselling news, which we're gonna talk about in the second half of the show. I'll recap my business and normally, I'll share with you what has sold on eBay and anywhere else that I happen to be selling. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about whether it's always all about the money. And we're going to kind of get into that kind of at the tail end of the what sold on eBay segment. So with that being said... All right, so let's take a look at what sold on eBay and elsewhere over the last week. It's been a pretty productive week here at the Galaxy. Uh, I don't know what your week has looked like. You can let me know down in the comments below. Uh, when I went to the post office, both times on Monday, I took two shipments, Monday, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. It looked like Christmas. There were boxes everywhere. So let me know what your week has looked like. Uh, it's been pretty crazy around here. We're gonna kick it off with something that is not a book or a CD. If you've been playing along <laughs> for very long here on the channel or the podcast, you know I sell a ton of books and CDs. That's what the bulk of this will be about. But the first item, this Nike baseball pullover, uh, Detroit Tigers. This is a men's 2XL. I've had this thing forever. I picked it up for about five bucks at a garage sale. I had it listed for $44.99, and it's, like I said, it's been here for a long, long time. It's part of my aged inventory. I'm running some 50% off specials this month. Someone finally grabbed it at 50% off, so it went for $22.49 with free shipping. I shipped this um, in a padded flat rate envelope. It was able to be folded up nicely and put in there in kind of a poly mailer as well. So it kind of kept it protected. So not a bad flip from five bucks to 2250, but it just took entirely too long. Books, you knew it was eventually going to get to the books. This was a really interesting item. It was in the big 2500 book lot that I talk about pretty regularly on this channel. Uh, so I own it for a quarter. This was a look at the German Navy from 1925 to 1945. And it was all in German. So part of that lot, there were some foreign language books in there. And this is the first one that I can recall that has sold a really neat piece. It was published in 1961, hardcover with its dust jacket. Uh, I sent out an offer for 15% off on this. I think I was asking $32.99. It sold for $28.04 with free shipping. Another book, this is a really old, really pretty ratty looking book from 1860, uh, Romaic or Modern Greek Grammar. Um, this is a book that when I did some research on it, it is highlighted as being culturally important by scholars. So despite its condition, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you can see it's pretty beat up. The cover is worn, the spine is damaged, the pages were yellowed. Uh, it had a kind of musty smell to it from obviously it's been <laughs> it's been around a while and probably sat in somebody's basement. Uh, still brought thirty dollars plus shipping. I had this listed I think for thirty nine ninety nine. I got an offer on it over the weekend and I went ahead and took it. This next item is an old vintage trains catalog. I talked about a couple of weeks ago. I made the trip and bought the big lot of train memorabilia and stuff. This is an item from that lot. There's going to be a few things today from that lot. I own this for one whole nickel, the Ives Trains Illustrated Catalog. Um, trains, trolleys, this is a reprint of a catalog from the 1930s that was done in 1967. This thing brought a full price offer of $35.99 with free shipping. Uh, that's 
a pretty nice flip from a quarter or from a nickel, I should say. More from that lot. And we'll talk about some of these things going forward. Uh, there's there's one in here that is definitely going to be a bolo for you if you're out and about and inclined to be looking for books. Um, I had one customer that purchased two items, a Marklin track layout plan. Marklin, like we talked about in last week's episode, is a German model railroad manufacturer. I've got catalogs literally going back to the 50s that I'm working on listing, uh, track plans, brochures, all kinds of stuff. This customer bought that and a Greenberg's layout building handbook for operators of Marklin trains. These two items went together to one buyer for $49.98. My cost of goods sold, 10 cents. Next item on Bonanza. Again, Bonanza is en fuego. <laughs> uh, it's been a couple of sales a week here lately instead of a couple of sales a month. So I don't I, I don't know what's going on with Bonanza, but I will definitely take it. Uh, a book called Cities by Lawrence Halperin. Uh, this was a landscape and architecture book that came out in the 1960s. Um, this was part of that big 2500 book lot. So I own this for a quarter it sold for $54.99 with free shipping. So thank you, Bonanza. I had several questions from last week's episode about Bonanza. One of the things is, um, and I addressed this in the comments, but, but Bonanza doesn't do auctions. There's essentially a full price site. So if you transfer auctions from eBay into Amazon, it automatically puts them at whatever your starting price is on your auction. I generally don't do a ton of auctions, so that was kind of an oversight on my part to not bring that up. Um, I have mine set to not pull any auctions just for that reason. And number two, I don't want someone to put a bid in on an auction and then the item sells on Bonanza and then I'm stuck. So if you're primarily an auction seller, Bonanza might not be the best option for you, but if you're a fixed price seller, like a lot of us are, um, I still think Bonanza is a pretty good opportunity. This next item, this is another one I tried to sell locally without any success, but uh, Memoirs of the Miami Valley. This is a three volume set from 1919. There were a variety of these as I researched this. Two of the volumes in the three volume set are the same pretty much everywhere throughout the Miami Valley. And then the third volume was specific to a county along the Miami River. In this case, it was my local county, Butler County, uh, but there were multiple others. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see from the picture, these were pretty rough. Um, one volume, the cover was taped up with black electrical tape. Another volume, the cover was essentially completely detached. The pages were very tanned and had foxing. It was a pretty, pretty rough looking set of books, but a fairly unusual collection that commanded in the end $59.99 plus customer paid shipping. So this was a really nice flip. Uh, these were also from that big lot. So I've got 75 cents cost of goods sold in this uh, for 60 bucks plus shipping. This is from an estate sale. I picked this up for a dollar. It is a American machinist handbook leather bound. It's a third edition first printing from 1920. It's a really small book. It's probably six by four. So it's not even a full size book. It looks like maybe it was designed to go in like a big pocket in some overalls or whatever. And so it obviously was a used machinist book because there were fingerprints and stains and all that kind of stuff. But a really interesting look at the industrial, early industrial age from the 1920s. So this went for $69.99 with free shipping. Again, pretty solid flip from a buck. Two more books. If you follow me on Instagram, which you should, shameless plug, uh, at Galaxy CDs Rocks, you saw this one late last week. Two books from the uh, World War I era, from the Dreadnought to Scapa Flow, Volumes 1 and 2. I had these both listed for $54.99. I had a buyer make me offers on two volumes at $45 a piece. I own these for a quarter each, so 90 bucks out of 50 cents. I'm taking that all day long. I mentioned these earlier, Greenberg's Guide to Lionel Trains. If you're out 
and about, and you come across Greenberg's guides, especially on the Lionel trains, take a moment to look up the individual book. They're not all big winners. I've got a few of them that are 10 bucks or less. And I know a lot of folks don't like to mess with that kind of stuff, but I've probably sold maybe 10 of these already for anywhere from 25 to $45. So they have, some of them have brought pretty good money. This one, the guide to uh, pre-war trains, pre-war sets, volume four from 1901 to 1942. This is a 1995 paperback reprinting out of that big lot that I own for five cents. It sold for $129.99. So again, if you're out and you see books and the guy was a model railroad collector, if there are any Greenberg volumes, take a moment to either scan it or pull it up on the eBay app and see what it's worth. Um, again, they're not all going to be worth 130 bucks, but man, they can really bring some good money. Um, I am selling these like crazy. This next item, unbelievably, and we'll get into this in a minute, is not the flip of the week, even though it's 150 bucks. You may recall back last spring, I bought some bound Air Force Service magazines. I had three sets of them I paid a dollar a piece for. This is 14 issues from December of 1942 through April of 1944, uh, Air Force Service Journal of the U.S. Army Air Force. I sold one of these months ago for like $138 plus shipping. This one went for $150 plus shipping on an initial investment of a buck. So, I've talked about bound magazines before. I will say it again. If you are out and about and are in a, an estate where there's a big history buff and you can find these kind of oddball collections of bound magazines, man, definitely look them up. Uh, they're, this have obviously has sat here for a while cause I bought it last spring, but well worth the wait for, uh, from a dollar to 150 bucks. And now your flip of the week. So I'm going to pop this thing up on screen. If you're watching on YouTube, it just came up and it's a CD for $17.99. And I just talked about <laughs> a set of books for $129.99 and a set of magazines for $150. And you're like, Ryan, how is this your flip of the week? Well, let's talk about that. I mentioned as kind of in the intro, is it always about the money? And obviously we do this to make money. This I'm full time. This is how I make my living. But every now and then, something happens, you get a sale that gives you, I don't want to get all new agey, but a, a spiritual or a psychological reward that's worth way more than what the money would appear to be. So I'm working through a batch of shipments, packing the CDs, packing the books, whatever. I go to print labels and I notice that on this particular CD, the name of the purchaser is an exact match for the artist of this CD, Christina Olson. Uh, this is a 2000 reissue of an album I think she recorded in the early 1990s, if I'm not mistaken, called uh, Love, Christina. This was on Rounder Records, new and sealed, so $17.99, pretty nice flip. I wasn't sure, but I took a flyer and I sent her a message and I said, you would not happen to be the person who recorded this CD, would you? Uh, I've had this happen a couple times in the past where, generally speaking, it's independent artists. So a guy who was in a local band and has now gone on to another career and he finds a copy of his CD on eBay that he's not had in years and they buy it. This was a little bit more of an unusual case because this was a this was not just Joe's band from, you know, Mansfield, Ohio or something crazy. This is a fairly significant release. It was well reviewed at the time. Anyway, I don't know that I really expected an answer, but within a few hours, um, Christina was kind enough to get back to me and say, yes, it is my album. Um, she has a fan apparently who lives in Australia, who has been looking for the CD. She was out and didn't have any found mine on eBay and purchased it. And we kind of went back and forth and I asked her if I could share this story with you. This made my whole week. <laughs> um, we talk about, and I've talked about in the past, sometimes you get a note with an order and I've sold, I sold an old wallet to a girl 
who was buying it for her grandfather who had had one just like it when he served in Vietnam. I've sold recipe books to people whose mother or grandmother had a recipe in kind of the local area church recipe book from the 1960s or 70s. And they send you that little note that says this $12 book or this $18 CD is it's mine. It's special to me. And I really appreciate that you had it and you offered it and I was able to purchase it. And at the end of the day, obviously, for those of us who are full time, we're here to make a living. But it's stuff like this that for someone like me makes this all a little bit more enjoyable and a little bit more worthwhile. So Christina, thank you again for your purchase. If you happen to be watching or listening to the podcast, it was a really good album. I enjoyed it. I went back and listened to it uh, just to see what it was all about. Uh, so last week I was recommending Wang Chung. <laughs> Today I'm on Christina Olson. So uh, take that for what it's worth. But again, thank you so much uh, for your purchase and for corresponding with me. Um, like I said, it meant the world to me. So with that, we are going to take a really quick break. For those of you listening to the podcast, we will be back then with the weekly business recap and a look at the reselling news. Stay tuned. All right, so let's talk about last week's business writ large. It was, like I said, it was a pretty good week. I expect that this week probably is going to be even better. Just looking at the numbers for the first few days, uh, some of the stuff that I showed you in the previous segment was items that I've sold since Sunday. So this week is knock wood shaping up to be pretty good as well. Listings for the week last week, man, I was on it uh, 155 listings for the week. So that's the most I've done probably since early December. So I was really pleased with that. Probably I'm not going to get there this week. I've had some other things going on. We got eight to 10 inches of snow overnight. So I spent most of my morning <laughs> digging out of uh, from that. And then I tried to go to my antique mall to do a restock and just reorganize everything. And I get there and because of the snow, they're closed. So <laughs> uh, it's just been one of those days. So I don't expect to get to that kind of number this week, but for last week, 155 listings. Sales for the week, pretty solid, 1408.81. So again, 1300 to 1400 is kind of the range I'm in under normal circumstances. And that's where we were. It broke down like this, uh, 55.49 total on Bonanza, or I'm sorry, from the booth, from the antique booth, 55.49 from the booth, $70.64 from Bonanza. So again, not big money, but it's essentially work free once it's set up. And 12.82.68 on eBay. Cost of goods sold for the week, $51.20, leaving me with a gross profit percentage of 96.37%. So I will definitely take that. $13.57 and 61 cents. Operating expenses for the week essentially only included one extraordinary expense. I mentioned in last week's podcast that my second month's rent for the antique booth was due. They charged it on the 31st of January, but it was on this week's business. Other than that, shipping and eBay fees total $6.84 and 81 cents, leaving me with a net profit of 47.76% or 672.80. All things considered, having the, the rent for the month fall in there, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that number. It looks like for the second month in a row, again, knock wood, trends continue. The antique booth is going to more than pay for itself again this month. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with how that's going. news updates. So I've got quite a bit of news this week. This is what happens when you skip an episode. <laughs> uh, for those of you who gave me encouragement for taking that little breather over the weekend, thank you so much. I appreciate um, all the kind words. I may actually, speaking of that, until we get into spring and I've, I've got an action camera, I am going to start doing some haul videos, but until we get into uh, a little bit more activity. 
I may drop this thing down to one episode a week, depending on what my weekends look like. That was super refreshing to actually have a full weekend where I really didn't do anything. Um, I packed some orders on Saturday morning and then I didn't, I didn't look at it again other than to answer a couple of questions from potential buyers, uh, until Monday morning. So, uh, there may or may not be an episode coming up this weekend, but enough of that. Let's get into the news. Uh, I had talked about several months ago, there was a buy invitation only eBay seller school that was available. That has now rolled out to everyone. eBay seller school is now in session. According to e-commerce bites, eBay is offering classes on how to get started selling and scaling a business on its marketplace. If it sounds familiar, they wrote about this back in October uh, when it was in what they call stealth mode. Uh, the invitation is no longer required in order to participate. There is no cost associated with this, although some of the portions of the program will require you to put in an email address, assuming they want to try to recruit you to sell on the platform or whatever it is and their new little newsletter. So uh, some of it is free. There's some videos apparently that you can watch that are no charge um, and don't require an email. Some stuff does require you to enter your email address. So if anybody has used that, let us know in the comments what you thought of the material there. This is one of those things that has honestly been on my list of things to do. And it's just so far down my priority list that I never have managed to get over there. But uh, if you have, please let us know in the comments what you thought of it. Uh, eBay reported their fourth quarter results last week. eBay's marketplace volume jumps to $100 billion. Uh, eBay continued to benefit from the new focus that the pandemic has placed on e-commerce. Sales volume rose 28% year over year, coming in higher than what management had forecast as recently as late October. That boost pushed gross merchandise value past the $100 billion mark for the year, which was up 17% when compared to 2019. We've talked about this also in the past. There's been a change in the philosophy within eBay with the new management team. The company differentiated itself from other online retailers like Walmart and Amazon in niche categories like collectible sneakers and luxury watches, to name just two. Uh, so those areas and refurbished goods, which they also put a really big push on during kind of the fourth quarter, have led to increased growth. So good for eBay. Uh, more than 185 million shoppers have made a purchase on the marketplace in the last year. Uh, eBay is also being rewarded by what this article, and as always, I will link to these in the show notes in the description below, uh, their asset light approach. It avoids many of the inventory and fulfillment challenges that plague other online retailers and allowed them to deliver impressive financial results. Fourth quarter operating margin rose 2.2 percentage points year over year to 23.6%. Uh, earnings jumped 49% overall for the year. So outstanding for eBay. They generated $2.65 billion of free cash flow in 2020. So outstanding. Congratulations to eBay. Uh, that can only be good for us because that means we're selling more stuff as well. <laughs> uh, you may have noticed if you're on eBay's managed payments sometime in the last couple of weeks, they changed the summary screen on the managed payments part of the platform on the tab. And my initial reaction was, this sucks. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of still my reaction. So what they did, they used to show you your total current balance, and then they broke it down. You had X amount that was pending and still processing and X amount that was available. Now, they don't show you a total. They show you three separate items, your available balance, which is really, really big. And then they show you a balance that's on hold for any returns or claims that have been filed against you. And then they show the processing amount, but there's nowhere that those three figures are combined. If you're really anal about your numbers like I am, 
I update that every day. So now I mean, it's not that big a deal, I guess. I've got to go in and add those three figures together to kind of balance my books. It takes me an extra 25 seconds. It's not that big a deal, but it was really, really nice to have that figure there. So eBay, if you're listening, um, add one more field <laughs> and just give us the total so we know exactly what's going on with our account. The breakdown is nice. Um, I have two issues I kind of with that. Money that goes on hold does not get released the same day that it's released, which is really weird because if you go into your transaction detail, you'll see if you processed a refund or a claim was decided in your favor, it will say that that item is released, the money is released, but if you look, it still shows in your on hold line until the next business day. So that's kind of a problem. There are some sellers who have also said that the on hold figure is sometimes added into one of the other figures and sometimes it is not. So they're having some struggles balancing their books. I've not run across that particular problem. Let us know again in comments what, what you think of the change. Overall, the look of it, they added a big blue square, you know, whatever. It looks nice enough, but at the end of the day, the accuracy and the detail of the figures are what's important and it's not quite there with this new update. Amazon. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these two articles. I just want to highlight a couple of things. I, I'm an Amazon Prime member. I buy on Amazon. You almost have to buy from Amazon if you want certain things at the best possible price. That being said, Amazon is... <laughs> They're kind of problematic. Now, number one, you, I'm sure you've all seen in the news, Jeff Bezos has decided to step down as the CEO of Amazon. It'll be interesting to see how that thing shakes out. But there are two articles this week that show kind of, I don't want to say the evil side of Amazon, but a side of Amazon that I, I don't know that they really, really would like to be out there. So the first article, good news for Amazon, net profit soars 84% with sales hitting $386 billion. Uh, just incredible. And again, most of the, we've talked about in the past, most of the online selling platforms have had this increase during the pandemic. Amazon is the 800 pound gorilla and will continue to be so, but they, uh, annual revenue was up 38%, $386 billion, a yearly increase of over a hundred billion dollars last year. Net profit was up, as I said, 84% compared to last year. So they're making money hand over fist. The next article, Amazon will pay $61.7 million to settle claims it withheld tips from delivery workers. The FTC alleges that Amazon in 2016 shifted from paying drivers the promised rate of $18 to $25 per hour plus tips to paying drivers a lower hourly rate. The FTC has alleged that with this shift, Amazon intentionally failed to notify drivers of this change and used the tips to make up the difference between the promised rate and this new lower hourly rate. Rather than passing on 100% of the tips as they promised to their drivers, they used that money themselves, lowered the wages, and then use that money to offset the difference. They're making money, they're printing money at Amazon and they continue to do stuff like this to screw their workers for lack of a better way to put it. Uh, it really leaves you with kind of a bad taste in your mouth. Let me know what you think about this kind of stuff. It's again, at best, it's not a good look for Amazon. Um, the vote was 4-0 at the FTC from the commission uh, in favor of the settlement. I don't know if this is a fine or it doesn't really say if this money, I, I guess the plan is that they will return this money to the drivers. So the drivers are going to get some kind of bump, uh, but just really, really messy for Amazon. Last thing back to eBay uh, and the managed payments debacle. Um, as we've talked about, on this podcast previously, bumps in the road were to be expected. 
that's normal when you try to roll out something the the size and scope of managed payments one of the things that we've always talked about is the need for transparency and clarity and this is an area where amazon or ebay's managed payments has kind of been a letdown so as it turns out depending on when you went on managed payments makes a difference in how your fees are being paid uh, according to this article if you signed up and activated managed payments prior to october 26th of 2020 and your store subscription began before that activation date store subscription fees are included on your monthly inv invoices final value fees seller currency conversion fees, international fees, and so on are return retained from current or future payouts related to your store's transactions, yada, yada, yada. However, if you are a managed payment seller activated on or after October 26th, 2020, all of your fees, including your store subscription fees, will be taken from your managed payments account, not from another source. They're not gonna be on an invoice that you can pay with your bank or with your credit card or with PayPal, those folks are having those fees deducted directly from their managed payments account. I would, for my part, I would be totally fine with that. I know a lot of folks like to pay those with a, a card that earns points. And I totally get that. For my part, I don't really care one way or the other. I'll just pay the fee. It's the fact that this particular thing is buried in their terms of service it was not really announced it was not really explained a lot of sellers are obviously a little bit out of shape about this um it could be a problem for you as well because essentially what happens if if you do not have enough money in your managed payments account rather than drawing on paypal or a credit card that you specify they will draw on the checking account where your managed payments deposits go depending on how you handle that particular account, you may or may not actually have any money there. So check your particular situation to make sure whether which of these different types of setups you're on. Uh, but managed payments, again, continues to be a bit messy. I assume that at some point they will convert everyone over to the same process. Again, having multiple processes just makes it way more complicated for eBay and everyone else than it needs to be. So I would expect that at some point, everybody will convert over and everything will just come out of your managed payments. It's unfortunate, again, for those who like to use a credit card to earn up points. Uh, in some cases, that could be a lot. If you were paying your final value fees, my final value fees on a monthly basis are generally a thousand dollars or you know something like that. So I mean, it could be a lot of money if you were paying that with a credit card. So let us know in comments, which program are you on? How are you seeing your fees and your invoice deducted? What do you think? How are, how's managed payments <laughs> working out for you? Uh, I still see a lot of people with uh, less than glowing reviews, shall we say. So with that, um, if this is the kind of content that you like, do me a favor, whack that thumbs up button, uh, let the YouTube algorithm know that this was a good video feel free to subscribe. Um, I won't ask you to click the little bell because I know most people don't, but if, if you're not a subscriber here and you've enjoyed this show, please uh, consider subscribing and sharing this content with your friends. And now it is time to sell. Thanks as always. Take care. Hey everybody. Thanks for spending a little time with Galaxy CDs, Rocks and Flips. If you'd like to spend a little more time, there's another video in the upper right-hand corner. If you'd like to spend a lot more time, you can subscribe down below.